Hello, my friends. Hi. Today we're gonna discover why exactly does classic Ermac not work in Dark Queen's Tower, and is it just Dark Queen's Tower? So there is a theory going around that it's only happening in Dark Queen's Tower because uh, it's like Sindel's tower. She's like magic. She's immune to magic and all that stuff. So in all other towers, it will be working fine. Also, there is a theory that Classic Ormac just doesn't work. His passive doesn't work on bosses any anymore. But we've discovered the actual reason. And it's none of the above. It's worse. It's much worse. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So I got an email. I'm going to show you the, 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 the email right now, right here. Uh, one of my viewers made a, one of my viewers made a very interesting discovery. He noticed that he he decided to use classic Ermac in a regular battle that is not a boss battle that has dot immunity modifier. And he said that his classic Ermac didn't work, meaning that it's not like magic immune thing doesn't come from just bosses. It doesn't come uh, just in this tower. It actually comes from dot immunity modifier. Let's test this real quick. We're gonna jump right into this fight. It has dot immunity. It's not a boss fight. Let's see if our classic or passive is gonna work. Magic immune. They're not taking any damage. Classic or doesn't do anything to them. That was true. That was totally true. You know what that means? That means that Classic Ermac's passive is not changed at all. Except one little thing. Where it says that no modifiers and no immunities can stop his dot. They're lying. There is one thing that can stop their dot. And it's dot immunity modifier. Now, we have this modifier in multiple places. We have it in uh, some challenges. I think some of the bosses in some of the challenges have dot immunity modifier. Not all of them, but some of them. So I'm going to assume that Classic Ormic is not going to work there either. But what does this mean for us? And why is it worse than any of the theories? Okay, it's not worse than any of the theories. It's, it's worse than some of the theories. So if we look here... Soul Siphon Dot, so it says it's a dot right here, is not affected by any modifiers or resistances. So that is a lie. That is a lie, obviously. Now we know that the uh, dot immunity modifier in towers, in challenges, I'm going to assume anywhere, maybe even Shao Kahn Tower, but it's, it's not important. Anything is not important except one thing, the towers. So every battle that has dot immunity is gonna make uh, gonna make classic Ermac not work, which which is every single boss battle in every single tower in the game. So the theory that classic Ermac only doesn't work in this tower turns out to be false. He he won't work in any tower because every single tower boss has dot immunity modifier. So they basically finally fixed it. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. It shouldn't have worked from the start. His passive was a dot. And honestly, it should it should have been they should have made his passive that it's not affected by any resistances. But it should be affected by the dot immunity modifier. It makes sense because it's a dot and because it's usually the modifier they use for bosses. So why not stop the most powerful dot in the game? Speaking of that, I think it's fixed now, and I think it's it should have been like this. This dot immunity thing should have countered classic Ermex passive from the very start. But the fact that they, it didn't now just makes it people angry because they used to like people got the taste what it feels like to beat powerful bosses with weaker teams. People who were weren't able uh, didn't have super strong teams to actually beat bosses the regular way. They used classic Ermac. They got used to it, and now they took it away. After years, literally, this works since the number since day one from tower number one, 
And now they finally decided out of nowhere, without mentioning it in a patch notes, without uh, saying anything in his passive that it's now affected by the modifiers. They just nerfed him into the ground. And to be honest, he doesn't... He's not useful against regular fights. There's literally nothing about this guy that you want to accept his... Like, you wouldn't fight him in any other battles except boss battles. There is just no point. He's a trash character. He has a snare on special too, but he doesn't have anything. He, his special one is horrible. His moves are... Like, there's so many better cards than Classic Ermic. One thing he had is now destroyed. I still believe that they, they should have nerfed it, but not to zero against bosses. I feel like maybe maybe they should make it a dot immunity, like cuts his efficiency in half. Maybe even in three times. Anything, any kind of cut, but not to zero. He still should be able to do something to bosses, just not as much as he used to be. That way, the character will still be kind of viable, but only for like the weakest of the weakest players who cannot literally deal even 5%, even 3% per, per turn. This will allow them at least to be able to beat the boss battles in like 20, 30 tries, which is ridiculous. It doesn't seem broken to me at all, but it shouldn't be zero. Otherwise, he's completely useless characters, one of the worst gold cards. Anyway, this is one part. Now we know why Classic Ermac doesn't work. There is another thing they did to pretty much uh, make us rage even harder in this tower. Treacherous Tanya used to work in towers. You take in, you break... People used to use her in boss battles where there wasn't an uh, indestructible modifier to break tower gear to decrease the health of our enemies. It doesn't work anymore. Tanya disables her opponent equipment card on any successful special attack. Now, that is a lie as well. It doesn't do that anymore. The only thing it does, it disables equipment abilities. What I mean by that, let, let's take a look, for example, on piece of gear. Let's say, uh, let, let's take a look at this wrestling jocks, uh, stars jaxophone. So what the Tanya's passive now does is it breaks, for example, everything on here except 92% damage boost in Darkwing's tower. So the tower-related boosts of health or damage are not affected anymore. So when, it, when her passive says she breaks the gear, she doesn't break the gear. She just disables the abilities on the gear. But all the stat boosts... For example, Dark Queen's Tower damage boost will still stay. You don't you do not break that. Which means that it's now again absolutely useless. Because the, the main re okay, it's not absolutely useless. It's still nice to be able to break some abilities, like a blind on tag, some anno annoying uh, character abilities. But the main reason people were using treacherous tiny in towers in boss battles, well. Granted, boss battles are, like, impossible to break stuff anyway, but, like, for example, some difficult battles where enemies have, like, 1.2, 1.3 million health. And they use Tanya to try and break the gear so they can take the character down. Now you can't. You will be able to disable the abilities, but you will not be able to reduce the amount of health your enemy has anyway. Or damage. It's just... And again, it wasn't documented in, in patch notes, it wasn't documented in, in, the, in the character description, it just came out of nowhere. Giant nerf to another helpful character in Towers. Let's, let's take a look back. N giant nerf to Day of the Dead Jade, when she was pretty useful against some bosses. She wasn't even that broken, come on. There was literally one boss when she was useful, it was the, the Shang Tsung boss. It wasn't even that big of a deal. She was literally the, the smallest boost help in tower, but they still nerfed her. Then, next thing, we, we got nerfed... Uh, what else did we get nerfed? Some Something that helped in towers. Then they added this uh, indestructible uh, debuff on, to bosses so you can't break their gear. Which is fine, okay. But then they nerfed Classic Ormic. Now they nerfed Tanya even more. Apparently she was still OP in their mind, even with indestructible debuff. It, and then they broke Rain. 
they, they, they broke every single useful character in in the towers and, and the reason is obvious so people buy gear because it's incredibly difficult to beat this tower without gear i'm playing this tower right now i'm uh i'm at battle i, I just beat battle 180 at the moment of recording of this video and I had to do a certain battles multiple times because I just couldn't beat them from the first try. Some with maxed out team. With this gear, I have a maxed out on commons, pretty much most of them. And a few rares. I don't have any epics. But I couldn't beat certain battles from the first try. You just sometimes you just get unlucky. The, the, all those blinds on Tekken. All those um, K11 Jades that have 90% chance to evade your attacks instead of 40 this tower is the hardest tower up to date. It's absolutely ridiculously broken. And they broke even more ways to be able to beat it. It's just... It's just so... I mean, I, I said it myself. I agree that Fatal Tower, it's an end game content. So it should be very difficult. But... I feel like it's a little bit too difficult now. Like... Even maxed out, like, just maxed out diamond team is not enough. You need the correct characters, actually correct teams, and you need at least some decent tower gear on to be able to beat this. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Legend does will be able to beat everything with Fusion Zero, MK11, Scorpion. I have no doubt in my mind. But, like, not everybody is Legend does, so that, I'm just saying. I don't know, guys. What do you think about these changes? I'm mostly mad that it wasn't mentioned anywhere. I, I agree that some of these changes make sense, like Classic or McNerves makes sense, but come on guys, at least the, the very least they should have done, even if they decided to nerf him right now, is to at least refund people some rubies. Because I know a lot of people spend a lot of rubies trying to get this guy. At least give, like the minimum, 1600 rubies. Or a free diamond card or some sort of compensation for ruining the character that people invested resources in. I don't know. Anyway, the tower is still fun. I enjoy the challenge, but it means that 90% of people, okay, maybe not 90, at least 50% of people who were able to do fatal towers before are going to be unable to do them anymore because they probably relied on classic Ermac a lot and also just the, the sheer difficulty of this tower is just so much higher than any other tower. It's going to be s so many less people be able to finish this tower. Which is, I guess, the direction it's going. I, I just don't see how it can get any harder. I think the next tower has to be easier. There's no way to go any higher. Any higher and it's going to become impossible. Alright, anyway, I'm done here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you, Patreons and members, for supporting this channel. You guys are awesome. I hope you have great holidays. Merry Christmas. I, I don't know where I'm going to upload this video. Maybe on Christmas, maybe before Christmas. Uh, yeah. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Starring Sky out.